Hey guys, what's up? Happy Friday the 13th, and to celebrate this most joyous day, I'm going to review the only Friday the 13th film I've yet to see. It is the 10th film in the series, Jason X. Now this movie's directed by um, the same guy who made The Horror Show, or House 3 The Horror Show. And um, if you guys have seen my old, 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 old review of that one, I gave it really high marks. I really liked it. And I said it, it's probably one of the more underrated um, 80s horror films. So this was probably one of his last films before he died. Um, I know he made like Pig Hunt after this in like 2008, which was some kind of like killer bore movie, I guess, but we're not reviewing that, we're reviewing Jason X. Jason X is basically based in the 25th century, and Jason just, who has been cryogenically frozen, just wakes up and wreaks havoc on this crew of this spaceship. Now, the director decided to go with a uh, lesser used horror movie sequel trope, and that trope is the In Space sequel. I've only seen it done maybe two or three times. The one big one I always remember when I think of an in, in Space sequel to movies, I always think of Leprechaun 4 in Space. Leprechaun 4 is probably one of the worst movies ever made. It's not fun, it's not cheesy, it's, it's just really, really bad. Um, not as good as the first three. And Thanks Killing 2, which 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 is the fictional film that uh, that you know Thanks Killing 3 is actually like the sequel to. The, that fictional film was also uh, a space sequel, and it and, and according to the movie Thanks Killing 3, it was absolutely terrible. So I'm hoping this will be better. Let's watch, shall we? So the film begins with an opening credit sequence that's actually really cool and a sequence kind of a like a like a kind of like internal view of Jason's like insights as he's being as like an autopsy is being performed on him. So once that ends, he's chained up in this room, just like in the middle of this fucking room. They got one guy guarding him. One fucking guy. Like he may be chained up, alright? But that does not mean that he that that there should only be one guard all right at this point he's w awaiting cryogenic stasis and the guy guarding jason is is getting creeped out because jason keeps staring at him and he's like you stare at this you ugly bastard and throws a blanket over him and he's like i don't have to look at him anymore all right and then we meet the chick that's like the head of the facility and she's about to um have part take part in the cryogenic freezing of jason and these government guys show up and they're like, uh, we can't let you, you know, put this guy in stasis. We have to take him alive and not frozen and see if we can use his ability to, like, recreate his cell. Like, like, he has, apparently, Jason's able to survive because he, his cells reproduce a lot faster. I don't know how that makes sense, even though according to the, uh, Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash series, he's actually a deadite. And that actually makes perfect sense to all the film, to most of the films. But here, it, it kind of doesn't work. But anyway, uh, so as you could have guessed, all the government guys go in there and they take the blanket off Jason, and it's not Jason. It's the security guard that was guarding him, dead, chained up like Jason was, and Jason just shows up, starts fucking massacring them all, and it's a pretty, pretty badass scene. So once that ends, you got the government chick that's like running the, that's running the camp, the Crystal Lake research facility, and she goes into the cryogenic chamber, like running away from Jason, and then kind of shoots him a bunch of times with a shotgun and basically pushes him into a cryogenic freezer. Well, there's a breach in it, and both her her, the entire room, and Jason are cryogenically frozen and preserved. Now, about 450 years pass. Alright, 450 years pass. 
We are now in the 25th century. This is, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy, isn't it? So, we're now in the 25th century and um, these scientists and the, like this this doctor and the, these kind of students, these like college students or whatever, they're on this like kind of field trip, I guess. They go to America and they like scounge around to find you know any ruins of the of an old of our old society because uh, Earth is now completely inhabitable. For what reason we don't really know. I guess it's a pollution thing. So they find the chick and Jason frozen, and they assume, oh, this guy must be her friend or something, um, and we can revive this chick, and we can see what the, uh, what's up with this guy, because I think, you know, and anyway, um, this, this stoner kind of character pushes on Jason as he's still frozen, basically a solid statue holding a machete. Bad idea, because it falls and cuts his arm right off, and that's kind of... Uh, where I stopped writing. So I've got to say, Jason X definitely gets a bad rap. Um, the plot and the idea of the film are definitely really, really stupid and ridiculous and bad, but they're still kind of cool in a way. If, if you can enjoy a ridiculous movie, it'll, you know, a movie where you can really suspend your disbelief and everything, this is definitely a movie I would think some, a lot of people could like. So, as with most, and has the usual slasher film tropes, uh, the acting is pretty bad, the writing is pretty decent, uh, it's, it's really laughable. Um, <clears throat> let's see, um, the characters are all your typical kind of slash from characters. You got the stoner, you got the slutty chicks, you got the smart chicks, you got the jock type guys. I mean, you know, it's it's just, it's just that. And then we have the uh, one chick who is revived from the cryogenic um, from her cryogenic state, and she's basically the one character that arrives in almost every horror film that is basically an expert on like the villain um you, I think you guys know what kind of character I'm talking about so yeah um the characters are kind of flat but they're still kind of fun to be around um the effects here are pretty good other than the very very bad at, but probably at the time very cutting edge CGI um, really, if they would have toned down the CGI a bit, it probably would have been a bit better. The actual sets, like, of the ship and everything, they all look really, really nice. And, you know, it looks kind of, I don't want to say Star Trek-ish, but it's definitely got a kind of Star Trek vibe. Um, I really like it. Um, the gore effects are pretty good here. Um... The lighting is also really good here. The they got like colored, like different colored lighting on the uh, ship and stuff. It's not like you know fucking Suspiria level of lighting because I honestly think Suspiria is probably one of the best lit horror films ever made. But this one still has some really nice lighting. Um, camera work good. Sound mix is fine. Uh, the music is pretty good. You know you got your usual kind of Friday the Thirteenth stuff. Um, also, this this uh, movie references Doom. It references Doom and Star Trek. That's boss. So, on the gore meter from 1 to 10, 1 being something like The Corpse Grinders, and 10 being something like Brain Dead, Jason X is probably maybe a 5 and a half. It's... I mean, it's... I, 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 I can't say it's as gory as, like... I can't say it's as gory as like the first Friday the Thirteenth. Um, I mean, there's there's a pretty decent amount of violence here. Uh, you know, it's 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 just one of those movies. I'd probably say it's about average for your uh, for uh, Friday the Thirteenth film. You know, it's kind of average, kind of you know you know right where you expect the violence to be in a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Um, honestly, I probably think this is 
one of the most underrated horror sequels since Halloween 3 Season of the Witch, and I really, really, really like this one, and I'm happy that I did, and I'm happy that I found a In Space sequel that's actually good. Four and a half out of five stars. Anyway, guys, you know where the links are in the description for the Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, all that, and my friend Chloe. She has a cosplay and makeup tutorial channel. Be sure to check her out. She does some really, really nice stuff. Um, also, Rotten Cotton t-shirts where I get my horror film t-shirts. I'm not wearing one of their t-shirts. I'm actually wearing my uh, Fright Rags Blood Diner shirt right now, but uh, also Fright Rags. They're really nice, too, although they're very expensive. But Rotten Cotton, they have cheap stuff, and it's always pretty nice. Anyway, I'm rambling and being f and, and and selling out. So, anyway, guys, I'm Biscuit Boo Six Nine. Signing off, wishing you guys a happy Valentine's Day and happy Friday the Thirteenth. Peace.